Okay. We'll cover today the high level, uh, in high level, the changes and the workflow that is uh, introduced into, um, in order to use quality of service, the API level changes, and the, um, uh, and a bit of the um, a bit of the detailed implementation. Uh, we're going to cover a, a, um, a short uh, real life uh, customer use case and uh, future work, and hopefully we'll get to show you some demo as well. So very ambitious, and I would really like to get started if we had a presentation. <laughs> okay, yay. So how do you go next? This doesn't work? Yes, it's working, yay. Uh, okay, so to kickstart the session, I wanted to, I, I was looking for a definition. And the definition I found is actually a good point. It, it would get me into um, emphasizing the first point I wanted to start with. So let's review the definition. What is network quality of service? It's the ability to guarantee a certain network requirements um, in order to satisfy SLA between the application provider and the end users. It's an awesome definition, very high level definition. And for those of you who've been around for the, couple, for the last couple of years in, in OpenStack Neutron, you probably know that the original blueprint that was submitted uh, for quality of service was introduced in Havana. Havana, anyone remembers? It's over two years ago. Um, and, and this de uh, definition is actually the re one of the reasons why it took so long. There's no industry standard de facto. It's, it's too high level definition. Everyone, there are multiple aspects for quality of service. Obviously, everyone can take it to its own direction. We have multiple vendors in the community. We would like to accommodate everything. We want to do everything. We want to do it very good. Well, two years, we didn't do nothing, actually. So um, what we decided to do is um, understand, acknowledge the fact that there's a variety of ways to define quality of service. Even if we're looking only on the Linux a domain which is kind of um, a narrow domain. You can look at the traffic control and you have a rate and C rate and burst and C burst and there are queues and there are classes, like tons of stuff and you go to the OVS layer, layer a bit of abstraction that you have there, which is good. You have min, max and burst, much better. Uh, but still, like there's no consensus, there's no standard. That was one of the problems we had to deal with. So we took a step back and we actually looked into what problem do we want to solve? Um, which was also an interesting question to ask, but we, come up with, we came up with three things basically that we would like to solve. The first thing is we would like to give the cloud administrator the ability to control the physical uh, the physical devices in the data center, the physical resources. We want him to control the bandwidth. Uh, the way he shares the bandwidth, bandwidth between different tenants. We want him to be able to provide different SLAs to different types of networks, which is something we all want to do. We maybe want to enable him to actually give different quality of service to different tenants and be able to charge accordingly. I don't know. So those are the things we identify as something we want to do, which is still really high level stuff. Okay, so we took another step and we said, okay, no more general definitions, let's go into a use case. Let's, get a, let's solve a use case in Liberty, let's deliver something that our community, our users can actually use. So we came up with the noisy neighbor problem, also known as the chatty neighbor problem. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with it, the problem is basically a shared resource. It all starts with a shared resource, in our case, the network bandwidth. And we want to share it with multiple consumers, in our case, the VMs that are sharing the single hypervisor. They all want the same resource, like these two cute answers, they want the same biscuit. But if one of them would take a, a, a bigger bite, or more of a fair share of his biscuit, I'm sure the other answer won't be so pleased. And it's the same with actually our virtual machines. In one, if one of the virtual machines is becoming very chatty, the other VMs are suffering. And we would like to avoid that problem. And this is the problem we actually focused on in Liberty, and this is what we were trying to solve. One more thing that we kept in mind is that 
there's a wide range of use cases. We have to implement something in a generic way. We have to be able to extend it. We want to make the extension easy uh, for other vendors, for other types of rules. Um, and, and that was something we kept in mind throughout the implementation. And I'm sure you're going to see that throughout the presentation here. Um, one more thing, <laughs> we actually wanted to deliver something in Liberty. So that was our biggest challenge. We wanted to get it to start and end in, in one cycle, to scope the work really good. So focusing on that use case actually enabled us because it eliminated three really big challenges. So let's go and see what we did not handle uh, in Liberty, but we hopefully will be able to handle uh, at future uh, cycles. So the first one, we didn't handle any of the physical air. So we do not configure any quality of service on the switches, on the router, on the physical switches, physical routers. We do not handle any of that in, in Liberty. We also only handle the traffic that is leaving the virtual machine, the VM egress traffic. Why? Two reasons. One, we'll be able to solve our use case without doing the incoming traffic. And second, solving the incoming traffic, rate limiting on the incoming traffic into the virtual machine is a more complicated problem to solve. Not Super complicated because we have plans in Mitica, but still, it, it was something out of the scope. Uh, okay, the last and, the, and my, my favorite thing is that we did not handle any integration with other projects, specifically not with the Nova Scheduler. It's really challenging. We really wanted to get something done, and that was the reason we postponed it. For example, to implement minimum bandwidth guarantee, we would have to implement integration with the Nova Scheduler, because we want to make sure that when you schedule a VM on a hypervisor, you'll be able to give it the minimum bandwidth you want and not overcommit uh, the bandwidth. So this is, again, something that is planned for Mitica, not handled uh, for this use case. So what we did, we met in the Red Hat Tel Aviv uh, office, um, and we had a coding sprint for three days. We had five companies on site participating in this effort. Uh, it was Red Hat, Midokura, Mellanox, uh, VMware, and Huawei. We, had very, um, we have multiple participant uh, remotees, and the core team members in Neutron were really helpful. I'd especially like to thank Miguel and Ihar, who were leading this effort. Actually, Ihar is here in the room. Um, so thank you guys, you did an awesome work. It's one of the key features that we were able to accomplish in, uh, in the Liberty cycle. So we were coding, and this is what we came up with. Um, we introduced the new entity that we introduced in order to, or oh, maybe one sentence before that. Um, so we were focusing in the OVS uh, default implementation for this. So everything I'm going to mention at this point is for the OVS. Later we also mention uh, SRI of V, which is another mechanism driver, which also implements the API. And, uh, uh, and we were focusing on rate limiting. Remember, the use case is going to uh, follow us throughout the presentation. So the first entity is a policy. A policy is basically a container of rules. Okay, it has the trivial parameters like name, ID, description, a shared and tenant ID. You can go ahead and create a policy. Neutron quality of, service, uh, quality, quality of service policy create and put the name and description and there you have it. Then you can go and associate a policy either with Neutron port or with a Neutron network. If you associate a policy with a Neutron network, it, all the ports in that network inherits the policy from, the, all the ports inherit the policy from the network. You can always override the policy on the port level, okay? Uh, the next API model that we added is the rule. So we added an abstract entity, quality of service rule, to, to be able to extend it with multiple types in the future. So the first type that we implemented in the Liberty Cycle is the quality of service bandwidth limit rules. Uh, it has two parameters, which is the max kilobit per second and max burst in kilobits. And um, you'll be able to configure these two parameters and go ahead and start your uh, policy. So one of the things that we added, uh, that is, we're going to add, and it's a blueprint that was approved for Mitica, is the, is the DSCP marking rule. We already have a blueprint for it. It's a new type that is going to be implemented in this cycle, and it will, it's going to be very similar to this rule. Uh, only have one parameter, which is the DSCP mark, 
with an integer, and there you go. It's as simple as that. Okay, so we have a quality of service policy. It can be associated with multiple networks. It can be applied on multiple ports. For now, it can only have one uh, quality of service bandwidth limit role. Uh, going forward, one of the future works I'm going to present later is the network classifier. Um, and, and once you will be able to classify the traffic, you'll be able to associate different types of rules with different types of traffic. And then you'll be able to have more than one uh, rule uh, in a policy, one, more than one bandwidth limit rule in, a, in the policy. Okay, so the workflow. You create a policy, you, cre you create uh, rules in that policy, you associate the policy with a board. By default, the permission model enables only the cloud administrator to create the policy. And the cloud administrator can go ahead and associate the policy with a network. The tenants themselves cannot disassociate the policy from the network, which means that's a way for the cloud administrator to force some kind of quality of service on tenants. Another option is for the cloud administrator to mark the policy as shared. If a policy is shared, the tenant can go ahead and disassociate the policy uh, from the network. Uh, the third option is that the, the cloud administrator fully trusts the tenants. He go ahead, change the policy JSON file, and enable the tenants to create their own policy associated, uh, associated with their networks, etc. Um, two more things I'd like to mention. So the first is that uh, the quality of service policy, any change to the policy immediately propagates to the ports. So if we have, with no downtime, so if you have a running VM associated with a policy that, for example, limits the bandwidth for 5K uh, kilobits per second, and you go ahead and you increase that to 7, because we are very generous today, uh, then the VM would immediately get more bandwidth. No downtime. That's cool. Uh, one other thing I want to mention before we deep dive into the implementation is that by default the policy or the quality of service uh, in general the feature is not e uh, enabled. It's implemented as an advanced service extension. So if you want to use it, if you want to, you have to go ahead to the configuration file and enable it. It's all specified in the user manual. We, we have very good documentation for this feature, I hope. Uh, I read it, I think it's good. <laughs> um, so go ahead and, and try it, so it's very useful. Now let's start uh, to with a deep dive. So just before I uh, enter into the functionality we support, I would like to remind you some uh, terminology, which is uh, actually always confusing a bit. Uh, so when we're talking about the quality of service, quality of service can be applied on either ingress or egress traffic, or maybe both. So when we talk about the VM ingress traffic, traffic that enters the virtual machine, it is actually the bridge egress traffic. And when and we, to we talk about the VM egress traffic, traffic that sent out of the VM, this is actually the bridge ingress traffic. So in case of a uh, open V switch, uh, each uh, virtual machine device is actually represented by the top uh, device in the physical server. And uh, it's possible to apply a policy that we need for VM uh, on the interface of the bridge. Currently, OpenV switch uh, supports two different options to apply quality of service. For the traffic that ingress the bridge, it's possible to apply policy which is quite simple quality of service mechanism that will uh, drop packets if they exceed the configured rate. Another option, which is uh, currently not supported by the work we did, is uh, applying shaping on the egress traffic, which is m the more sophisticated mechanism and it actually queues the exceeded packets. So for uh, the quality of service rate limit implementation that we did for Liberty, we, as we've not mentioned before, what we want to do, we want to uh, limit the traffic that egress the VM. So we uh, do it by applying the 
ingress policy on the tab interface of the OVS bridge. Once user defined the bandwidth limit rule and associated with the port that realized by the open vSwitch connectivity, what happens uh, on the driver layer is uh, just uh, configuration of your open vSwitch control commands and deploying the attributes we have on the tab interface. We support currently two attributes, one for setting the ingress policy rate, uh, which is an integer uh, number measured in the kilobits per second, and the ingress uh, policy burst, uh, which is me measured in kilobits, and it is advised to set the burst size uh, to be at least as large as uh, the interface MTU and uh, to allow the algorithm to be more forgiving to give it at least 10% of the policy rate itself. Another uh, mechanism driver that, that, was, uh, support, that is currently supporting quality of service is SRIOV. So let me just explain a bit what is SRIOV all about. The SRIOV technology allows the PCI device to appear as mil multiple separate PCI devices in the host. So we have one single physical port which is, uh, actually can be shared among uh, multiple virtual machines and uh, it can uh, provide a near a native performance to the, to the guests. When uh, we have some uh, bandwidth for the physical port, it is actually shared across all virtual uh, functions of, this, uh, of the physical port. Uh, OpenStack uh, supports SRIOV uh, virtual function pass-through as a network interface to the guests since uh, June release. Uh, and in order to apply rate limit on the SRIOV uh, port, uh, we use IP-Link commands and we need to know the exact physical device, uh, the device of the physical function that hosts this virtual function and the physical function index uh, so then we apply the requested rate on this virtual function. Uh, the IP link uh, rule, uh, the IP link uh, utility actually has a number of limitations. First of all, the measurement is uh, done in megabits per second and not kilobits per second. So if uh, the user specifies uh, in the current uh, API we have the rate in uh, kilobits per second, it will have to be rounded to the nearest megabits per second, and it also doesn't support any floating numbers, only integer. So uh, it will always be the nearest uh, number, and it also doesn't support the burst, so it will be just ignored by the implementation in the, the, this moment. So uh, now we'll deep dive into the implementation details. The Quality of service was implemented as a service plugin that uh, implements quality of service API. Uh, the plugin uh, handles API requests to, uh, to handle quality of service policy and rule related operation. It is responsible to persist the quality of service uh, models in the database which holds for the policy, for the bandwidth limit rule, and also for the binding between the core resources, such as network and port, with the quality of service policy. We have the pluggable uh, notification drivers that uh, are used in order to propagate quality uh, of service objects uh, modifications to the backends. Currently, for the reference implementation, we have message queue-based notification driver that is responsible to send uh, notifications to the L2 agents. As part of this uh, implementation, uh, some infrastructure mechanisms were added in order to uh, support a pluggable way to add uh, additional rules and uh, support in the future rolling upgrades. So we have the RPC callbacks mechanism that both sides, agent and server, register the, ser the server side registers the provider of the information and L2 agent can subscribe to the changes. And also this is a, this is a middleware that we use to propagate the changes from the server to the agent. The data that is passed between the service plugin and the agent is actually using the a Oslo version object library 
and Ihar here, here did the tremendous job to introduce this mechanism, so it's very easy and a looking forward model to propagate agent between, between a, a, the server and the, the agent. On the agent side, we also had some infrastructure changes. Um, we introduced the agent extensions uh, layer, which allows to load uh, different L2 agent extensions, and uh, currently we have the quality of service agent extension. So this is generic layer that can be reused between different agents. Uh, and in case uh, of the quality of service agent extension, it uses the quality of service agent driver, which currently we have for SRIOV and for open v switch to do the specific configurations on the underlying technology. While the quality of service agent extension is uh, handling the generic part that can be reused between different uh, drivers. Uh, in, in order to integrate this uh, functionality with extending the core resources, we didn't want to follow the uh, mostly common but uh, very abused pattern of the mixins. So what we introduced, we introduced the core resource extension, uh, which defines the interface that the L2 plugin should implement in order to delegate the extension association with the L2 uh, core resource uh, to the handling service plugin. So uh, in our case, there is a quality of service core resource extension that will propagate the policy ID association with port or network to the, to the QoS service plugin for user handling and also to store it in the database. So f with the reference implementation in ML2 uh, plugin, we have ML2 quality of service extension with, which simply invokes the quality of service core resource extension and uses the service plugin to provide all the required uh, work for the quality of service uh, models. Now I would like to uh, talk about a few use cases for uh, the extensibility uh, that can be done with quality of service. So we envisioned the extensibility from the early beginning and it was uh, actually one of the major requirements for our implementation. So the most common case uh, is uh, adding new rule type to the model. And uh, as Levant men mentioned, we already have this happening for the Mitaka with uh, the DCP marking rule. So it's actually quite easy to add a new rule. It should be initially defined uh, in the QoS API as a new API resource, and uh, the proper handling method should be added in the quality of service plugin. Obviously, the new data model should be defined for this uh, rule type. Since, uh, as I mentioned before, we use versioned objects that are passed between server and the agent to propagate the the changes of the quality of service policy and rules. So we'll have to introduce uh, the version objects of this rule and uh, to bump the quality of service version to reflect that there is new rule that uh, extended the current policy model. In order to manage this new resource, obviously we also need to update the neutron CLI with the, the handling of, uh, of this uh, new uh, resource. Both Neutron Server and Neutron Client were implemented in such a way that it is very easy to add new rule type without, or maybe with a little modification of the uh, general code. Another use case that we envision that the quality of service is going to be implemented by more uh, mechanism drivers or L2 plugins. So first of all, uh, either it mechanism driver or plugin, it should declare what quality of service rules it's going to support. So this will just require to populate the, the attribute of the class or the mechanism driver with a list of supported rule types. In case of ML2 plugin, um, the supported rule types is the common subset of all the declared rule types by the active uh, mechanism drivers in the current deployment. On the service plugin side, uh, the one uh, who, adds, uh, who wants to add support to the backend will have to add the notification driver 
that will propagate the model changes to the to the backend to the backend for further implementation. The last but not least, uh, the L2 agent extensibility. So let's say uh, for Linux bridge uh, or for maybe some. Uh, uh, vendor uh, maintained L2 agents, they want to support quality of service on the agent side, so it wise to reuse the infrastructure we already added in Open vSwitch and SRIOV L2 agents to use the quality of service agent uh, extension uh, managed by the agent extension management, and so in such a way that uh, it only requires to implement the quality of service agent API driver in order to configure the underlying uh, networking technology that is used by this uh, L2 agent. Uh, now I would like to explain the workflow we have for the most common uh, user operations. So first of all, uh, what happens when the quality of service policy is attached to the port? So initially, user just created the policy, populated it is this required rule, and, and then port is created or updated with this policy. When this, then ML2 plugin will send the notification to the L2 agents about this uh, port changes, and the L2 agent will uh, queue these changes to be handled during the uh, general execution uh, daemon loop that it has. So during this loop execution, a uh, agent will uh, query the server to get all the device's details, uh, actually the neutron port details for uh, the device that it needs to update. When the get device details comes to the ML2 plugin, after it populates all the common parts, such as the MAC address and P, etc., cetera, uh, it will invoke the register ML2 extensions. One of them is the quality of service. Quality of service will get the details of the policy associated with this port from the quality of service plugin using the same core extensions that I explained before. So once this data is back to the agent, agent first of all does its regular L2 connectivity uh, work, and then a uh, agent extension manager will invoke the registered uh, agent extensions. When it comes to the quality of service ag agent extension, what it does, it will pull the details of the policy from the server using the RPC callback infrastructure and get in return the quality of service rules. Once it gets the rules, it will invoke the registered quality of service driver, so currently uh, based in the OVS or SRIOV, and will request this uh, configuration actions and uh, first of all it will remove the previous policy and rules and then configure the new ones. Uh, the general layer of the quality of service uh, agent extension will store the mapping between the policy and the port so once policy is updated and the notification will arrive it will do uh, the reconfiguration of the onboarding ports. In order to support this policy update the the agent side uh, registers for RPC uh, notifications upon uh, policy changes. On the server side, quality of service plugin uh, registers itself as the producer of the information for the policy changes. So as I mentioned before, we introduced some general infrastructure for RPC callbacks, which is uh, actually hides the usual uh, RPC topics uh, work uh, that we usually do to, to propagate RPC messages between agent and server. And once some policy is changed by the user, uh, the RPC callback uh, is notified by the quality service plugin that the policy is changed, and then the policy changes are pushed to all register L2 agents. When it comes to the agent that has the mapping I mentioned before between port and policy, quality of service agent extension will go over the whole, all ports uh, related to this policy, remove the old rules, and configure new rules. Hi. Uh, I would like to talk uh, about a customer use case that started at the beginning of this year. Around uh, February, a uh, customer contacted us and requested several 
uh, issues uh, to solve and to help him to build a, a cloud, OpenStack cloud uh, for his needs. Uh, the requirement list wasn't so clear at the beginning, so we met several times and discussed about the requirement. After a few meetings, we had a clear list of the requirements. The uh, requirements uh, split into two areas. The first one is the uh, network area, and the second one is the virtualization and the cloud area. Okay, for the uh, virtualization and the cloud area, uh, the, cu the customer asks us to provide uh, uh, virtualization with the uh, support of multi-tenancy. For each uh, tenant, the customer asks us to uh, provide policy with uh, specific policy settings for uh, uh, each ten tenant. Each tenant should run uh, several applications uh, on top of his virtualization. For this case, we provided also a containers, list of containers on top of the virtualization on the VM, on the virtual servers. Also, we use the standard, the SRIOV, uh, the standard SRIOV in the community in order to provide virtual function for each uh, VM. For each virtual function, we also uh, support a cost policy with rate limit at the beginning, next stage for the next year is also to support bandwidth guarantee. And for the network side, the customer asks us also to provide uh, auto provisioning for the uh, policy in order to uh, enforce the policy with the rate limit also for the network side not just on the VM side. Uh, and also to support uh, HA uh, for the network side. Uh, as you can see in, the, in this slide, we also uh, provided something that we called VAF lag, virtual function lag. That is, this is a transparent, transparent for the uh, VM, for the tenant. The user doesn't see the lag, the lag is uh, supported by Melanox in the NIC. It's transparent for the user. The policy also with the hash function implemented in our NIC side. And also we provided uh, ML2 SDN pl uh, mechan plugin that supports uh, also uh, in the policy. Uh, the ML2 SDN plugin actually uh, publish outside uh, to any SDN controller uh, the policy properties. In Melanox, we have uh, a product that, called, that is called uh, Melanox Neo. Melanox Neo gets those notifications and configure the entire network with the policy. And also uh, provide auto-provisioning of segmentation uh, like uh, VLANs, or in case of InfiniBand, the uh, solution in Melanox, we provide PKA isolation. Okay, this is the WAF lag that I mentioned. Actually, in the WAF driver, as you can see, we split it to two virtual function each virtual function is associated with uh, a specific network port. It's transparent for the user. The user doesn't see uh, two, vi two virtual functions, only one. And for this virtual function, we uh, define the policy. Also, please know that uh, for a uh, lag, we can support also active-active Active passive and LACP. For this case, we took only the uh, active passive option because the user just asked us to implement the uh, core support. Thank you. 
Okay, so we've seen what was implemented in the Liberty Cycle. Uh, we've seen that we only cover the basic use case. There's a lot more, more work that needs to get done. Some of the things are only started, we already started to work on some of the things. Some of the things we would really love any um, more working coding hands, uh, actually. So let's see what's, what is currently baking. So we have the marking, we have DSCP ma marking that was mentioned a couple of times during the session. The spec was submitted and approved for Mitica. I, I really hope we'll get the implementation fully done within this cycle. So we'll have a DSCP marking rule. Uh, we also have a patch already available to implement the COS API changes on top of Linux Bridge Agent, if you guys are interested. So uh, it's up for review and you can Look, take a look at that. One of the interesting, more interesting work that is be going to be done, hopefully in the Mitaka cycle, is traffic classifier. It, it not only applies to quality of service, I've been to a session about a uh, network function chaining that they, they, they mentioned they already have some kind of implementation to network classifiers. Uh, also, I talked to one of the guys about be it being useful in security group. So it's a key feature probably needed by many features. Hopefully we'll get started with it uh, in the Mitica cycle, we'll get the network classifier in, and then we can apply a quality of service rule on specific types of traffic. So it's really cool stuff. Uh, you don't see it in the slide, but there's a work to integrate a RBAC mechanism that was introduced in Liberty. RBAC is a role-based access control, a finer grained uh, access or permission model, let's call it like that, if you want to create a policy and only share it within uh, specific tenants and not with all tenants, you'll be able to do that. Uh, obviously, we also uh, have to handle the upgrade mechanism and few other uh, marking. So a lot of work to be done. We are starting to, to take a look at some of the, of the things that needs to get done. Uh, hopefully, they will be completed in the Mitaka cycle. So thank you. I think now it's time for questions, if you guys have any. Yeah, um, thanks. Nodir from Zero Stack. So um, I wanted to clarify, you said in the beginning of your work, uh, you focus on the hypervisor only, mm -hmm. but Moshi showed an example where it's supported on top of Rack switch as well. That's a Mellanox specific implementation that it involves the physical layer. But if you go to the reference, the API is generic, right? Mm -hmm. It's in Rutron, everybody, every plugin can implement it and extend it uh, the way it fits. For the specific reference implementation, we only handle the, the virtual switches in the hypervisor. Thanks. More questions? Yes. Um, this question, uh, very especially it sounds uh, great for them, they did great work. Thank uh, you. Uh, they did a gr the great work. <laughs> <laughs> what about the uh, policing and enforcement? Yeah. It's, it's a good question. Um, so the question was, what about policing and, and bandwidth, uh, minimum bandwidth guarantees, basically? So this is something we are definitely going to look into Mitica. There are two aspects. One is the integration with the Nova Scheduler to place the VM in such a way that the hypervisor is not overcommitted versus the mean bandwidth guarantee. That's one aspect. The other is to do the policing versus the reference implementation with quality of service. Both things are hopefully will be handled in, in the Mitaka cycle. At least there's one design session to integrate it with Nova Scheduler in this summit. So let's hope it's going to go okay. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. More questions? I, yes. I, just, I just have a qu quick question. Uh, sorry, I'm uh, working very late. Um, so for the port change, the policy up, up, update uh, example you gave, do you expect any change on the API side? In other words, in the M release, uh, can we make API call and then change the policy on the per port basis? Yes, if, if I understand the question co correctly, you're asking if you can go and, and add the uh, quality of service to existing ports, that's the question? That is correct. Yes, so to my understanding, yes, you have to install and upgrade your code, of course. You have to enable quality of service and then you need to create a policy and associate it with the existing port. Is that something already available in the, in the L release? Or? Yes, Okay. Great. yes, this Thank is Liberty, you, you can use it. And open bags. Ah, okay, so, sorry guys, we don't have time, but we do have a demo. The demo is available both in Miguel's blog, Miguel is the core team member who did uh, lead some of this work, and there's also a demo in the Mellanox boot, so we won't have time to present it here, but go ahead and check it out. Uh, also, the slides will be available with link to Miguel's blog, so you can check it from there. Do we have time for more questions? I guess not. So, thank you guys.